In this lesson, we're going to be studying medians and altitudes in triangles. So first definition, what exactly is a median? A median is the line or line segment that connects a vertex to the midpoint of the line opposite that vertex. So when we're looking at a triangle, what we would have is with a given triangle, and if I know where the midpoint of one of the sides is, the median simply goes from the vertex to that. It may be perpendicular, it may not, but that is our median. Now, theorem 5.8 is called the concurrence of medians theorem, and it tells us that the medians are concurrent at a point that is two-thirds the distance from the vertex to the side opposite the vertex. So if I were to draw the medians in for all three sides here, they would meet at a specific location and looking at it this section is two-thirds of the entire median so we're able to look at and get several relationships going from these if I know that the distance across this entire median here is nine then the, this concurrence point is 6 of those 9 down from the vertex. And with this, with the point of concur concurrence of these triangles, or of these medians, there is a name for it, and this is the centroid. And what the centroid acts as is the balance point, or the center of gravity, of the triangular shape. So if you have a triangle of uniform thickness and density, the centroid is where you could place a pin underneath it and the entire structure would balance on that pin point. So with the medians, we can find the centroid. We already had an in-center and a circumcenter from our perpendicular and angle bisectors. There is one more section or one more special characteristic that we need to talk about when looking at bisectors of triangles and that is going to be so again vocabulary we're going to start with just what is an altitude quite simply an altitude is the perpendicular segment that runs from a vertex to a line containing the opposite side now what makes altitudes different is that when we are looking at a triangle such as an acute triangle this will be inside it will be interior to the triangle itself if we're looking at a right triangle then the point of concurrence we're going to speak about soon is at the vertex of the right angle if we're looking at an obtuse triangle, then the concurrence point is actually going to be outside of the triangle itself. So our other points, our in-center, our circumcenter, and our centroid, were always inside of the triangle. For the altitudes, it can fall outside. Now, theorem 5.9 here, concurrence of altitudes, tells us simply that the lines that contain the three altitudes of a triangle are concurrent. Now the point that they are concurrent at is called the orthocenter. And if you continue in an examination of math and geometry specifically, there are applications for the orthocenter, but that's beyond the scope of this geometry course. In the picture here is a image that I pulled off the internet. Somebody being a little joking, perhaps, what's the dotted line called? This is the altitude, but those who are Harry Potter fans might recognize this. They call it the Elder Wand. Now, with the orthocenter, with the concurrence of these altitudes, finding that location is going to take a little bit of our algebraic skills and graphing capability. So let's take a look at how we can do that, given a set of Locate the orthocenter of a triangle ABC if the vertices are located at the points given here. So let's locate those points on the grid. We have 1, 3, 
for point A. We have 2, 7 for point B and 6, 3 for point C. And again, we're trying to find the orthocenter. So I connect these three points. And with it, I'm also going to need to find their slopes. For line segment AC, the slope is 0. It's a horizontal line. For line segment AB, the slope, well, between these two points, we rise 4 and run 1, so we have a slope of 4. For line segment BC, our slope, we drop 4 and run 4, so 4 divided by 4 is 1. In this case, it will be negative 1. Now, the point that we need has to be, or the line that we need has to be perpendicular to these. Well, perpendicular to a zero slope is an infinite slope. So, what would be the vertical line that passes through B? That's going to be x equals 2. That's our first altitude that gets drawn here. Next, we need one to interact with line segment BC. So, a perpendicular slope has to multiply to negative 1. In this case, 1 times negative 1 will give us that. So we have y, and it also needs to contain point A. So y minus 3 equals 1 times x minus 1. Distributing, we have y minus 3 equals x minus 1. Solving for y, we have y equals x plus 2. So the location where these two lines intersect each other is going to be the location of our orthocenter. Since we already know what x is, we simply use substitution, and we can come out with y equals 2 plus 2, which tells us y is 4. So the location of our orthocenter is going to be the point 2, 4. So I know that was quick. Go back and review it if you're still brushing up on your graphing and algebraic skills. But we have now our orthocenter and our centroid, along with our circumcenter and incenter that we learned in the previous lesson. And we will continue to use these not only for triangles, but other geometric figures as well.